Hello and welcome. My name is Kevin Ashton. I'm a chef and food writer. And today I wanted to talk to you about seafood risotto. Now you know that risotto is one of my favorite dishes, but perhaps you don't know the difference between seafood risotto and other types. When I wanted to learn about seafood risotto, I was working in Washington DC and I approached a very good friend of mine that was also a very well-known Italian chef. And I asked him, well, how do you make seafood risotto? And he explained to me that to make a really good seafood risotto, you don't finish the risotto with cheese. Instead, you finish it with a really excellent extra virgin olive oil, a selection of fresh herbs and citrus flavors like lemon or lime juice. And this way, the seafood flavors shine through your dish. So I went away and gave this a try for myself and I had to agree this makes a great seafood risotto. Let me show you how. So on my cutting board and be just behind my cutting board are the non-seafood ingredients for my seafood risotto. So we have one fat clove of garlic, very finely diced. We've got one large lemon which I've zested and we will juice the lemon into the risotto at the end. We've got 80 grams of finely diced onion. We have a pinch of saffron. We've got 50 grams of unsalted butter. We've got 75 grams of green beans and I've trimmed the, the ends off the green beans and then cut them in half. And we will park these before we add them to the risotto. We've got 100 grams of red peppers and these will be sauteed down again before we put them into the risotto. We have just over a litre of fish stock but if you don't have fish shock, you can use chicken stock. We have a good quality extra virgin olive oil to finish the risotto with. And you also have some fresh herbs. In this case, I've got basil and I've got coriander that I'm going to chop up and put in at the end of the risotto because you don't put cheese into a seafood risotto. And of course, I've got my 300 grams of arborio rice. Here are the selection of seafood I've chosen today for my seafood risotto. And of course, it really depends on what looks good at your fishmongers or your supermarket as to the seafood you choose to put in it. I've chosen salmon, and each of these portions weigh about 80 grams. I've got two fillets of sea bass, and we're going to cut those sea bass we've trimmed the fat off the bottom of the, the fillet and then we're cutting each fillet into two pieces and we will both cook the sea bass and the salmon separately and then use them to decorate the risotto with. I also have some English clams that I steamed earlier on and I have some large prawns that were raw and they're shell on and we're going to show you how to remove the shells and how to wash the shrimp before you cook them. So here is my raw shell on shrimp and we need to take the shell off and we also need to what we call devein it which is to take the intestinal tract out of the top of the shrimp. So the first thing we do is we have to pull gently on the little feelers at the bottom of the shrimp to remove those and then we want to peel the shrimp. And I want to leave a little section of the shell at the end. You see that? We've left a little bit of the shell. This is purely optional, but it gives a little bit more presentation. And then we're going to run the knife along the top, all the way down and then we're going to wash it under cold water to make sure it's all nice and clean. So we'll just show you that's how it should look. Now it's ready to cook. The thing we're going to do is cook the red peppers. So we've got them ready to go into our risotto. So we're going to take a tablespoon of olive oil. The pan is already hot on high. 
we'll rotate the pan around a little bit to get that olive oil around the pan then we'll put our peppers in and we're going to season the peppers with a little bit of sea salt a little bit of black pepper and we want to cook these peppers quite quickly keep stirring them around as if it was a stir fry we want them almost cooked but not quite let's keep moving them around the pan and this will take about four minutes until they're cooked sufficiently from the time you put them into the pan We've been moving the peppers around in the pan for about three and a half, almost four minutes, and this is about where we want to stop the process. The peppers aren't really heavily coloured. You're just seeing a little bit of caramelisation on the edge of the peppers. That's exactly where we want it. And we'll take that off the heat now. So we're going to blanch our green beans. Remember, we've cut up our green beans, our 75 grams of green beans, into our salted boiling water just to blanch it for a couple of minutes. We don't want it to be cooked all the way, but just about half way. When they come back out, we want to cool them down as fast as we can with cold water to make sure they keep nice and green. So in my saucepan, I have 25 grams of unsalted butter, which is half of the butter we measured for the, the ingredients for this risotto. Now we're gonna put our 80 grams of chopped, finely chopped onions into that. And we're also going to put our garlic. And we want to cook this on a medium heat without it browning until the onions are soft. So we need to keep it moving. So it's very important when you're making risotto that you don't get any color on your onions, but that your onions are translucent and very soft which gets rid of the bitterness of the onions before you add the other ingredients. So we've been cooking this now for about two to three minutes. We'll probably give it another minute, then we'll add the rice. Now we want to add our rice, our 300 grams of risotto rice, and give it a really good stir around, because we don't want the rice to burn or the onions to burn. And we want to coat all that rice with the butter. And we just want to keep stirring this round for about a minute and then we're going to add our white wine now all risotto recipes have white wine because it's a balance of the acidity of the white wine against the richness of the other ingredients we're now ready to add our wine we've got 175 millilitres of what dry white wine which we're going to add to the pan And we're going to stir that around and cook it until all the rice has absorbed white wine which will only take a few minutes so you can see just after a couple of minutes the 175 milliliters of white wine has been absorbed into the risotto rice and the next stage if you choose to put saffron into your seafood risotto i've put some boiling water into this uh, little cup to help bring the color and flavor out of the saffron so we're now going to add that which will turn it a wonderful golden color as it cooks we want to make sure the saffron is quite expensive that we get every last strand of that saffron into our risotto and we want to stir that and you can already see that the rice is starting to turn yellow from the saffron and now we're going to put the first ladle of our seafood stock remember if you don't have seafood stock it's fine to use chicken stock if you want so just like any risotto when you're putting the stock in you need to put the 
stock in gradually a ladle at a time let the rice absorb that stock before you add some more so I've got my heat on my risotto on a medium heat and you can see now that that's pretty much absorbed the stock so we'll put another ladle in and whenever you're adding stock to anything you really need to have hot stock so I've got my stock heating up in my other saucepan because you don't want to be putting cold stock into your risotto it will just slow up the cooking process so we're about to add the last couple of ladles of our stock into our risotto you can see that it's a lovely yellow, lemon yellow color now from the saffron it's important to keep stirring your risotto so it doesn't catch or stick on the bottom of your saucepan and allow time for the stock to be absorbed before you add any more so because we're going to cook some additional seafood to put into this we want to cook this a little bit under and remove it from the heat while we cook and finish our seafood so we're going to add now don't worry if you don't use all of the stock what you're really looking for I think this is about as wet as you want it and the risotto will continue to absorb that stock I also turn the heat down low but we will take this off in a couple of minutes time and I want to test that it's al dente so I want to take a spoon and taste the grains and that's about as far as you want to take it now it does look a little bit too wet at the moment but don't worry the stock will be absorbed into the rice so we're going to pull that off and now start cooking our seafood cook my seafood now and I want a, a good finish to the seafood so I'm going to use my uh, cast iron skillet the pan is hot with some olive oil in it so we're just going to lay the salmon away from us you see you don't want it to stick and we have the pan on high and I want to get all the sides covered before we turn the heat down now we're starting off with the salmon and then in halfway through cooking the salmon we will add our two pieces of sea bass and our shrimp so now we're going to turn the salmon onto its skin and we're going to hold it there so it doesn't fall over and we're also going to season it that's just to crisp up the skin get a nice finish to it now we're going to move it back apart and turn it and turn it Get some apart there. Right, we're now going to cook our sea bass, and I've put little slits in the sea bass and in the skin side, which is to stop the sea bass from curling up when it goes into the pan. And we're going to put it down skin side first. And we'll also put our shrimp around the pan. And then we're going to season everything with some salt and some pepper. And now we're going to turn the heat down just a little bit. And we want to get a plate, a clean plate, to lay the seafood on until we're ready to put the risotto together. So make sure you have a clean plate to hand. 
So we can turn with a pair of tongs, turn the shrimp over. And I think with our spatula, we now turn that sea bass over as well. Now people tend to overcook seafood rather than undercook it. So we want to make sure that when we take it out of the pan, it's not overcooked. So the first thing we'll take out will be the shrimp because they don't take hardly any time at all. Then we'll take out the sea bass and then finally the salmon. So now we're coming to the finishing touches of our risotto. You can see here that all that stock has been absorbed into the risotto. So we are going to add that little bit more of our stock just to loosen up a little bit. We've also put our red peppers in there, our sautéed red peppers and the green beans. It's looking absolutely delicious. And we're going to check it for seasoning. So we give it a spoon. I'll we'll have a little taste. Mm, that's really, really good. Okay, and I've got the heat completely turned off at this point. So we're going to add our clams. We're just going to drop the clams into the risotto and stir that in. And all those delicious clams in there. And then we're going to put our shrimp in there. And now we're going to put our 10 grams of coriander and 10 grams of basil that we chopped up into there as well. And you need to stir it over carefully. And I think we can have that little bit more stock in there. Keep it nice and loose because risotto needs to be a little bit unctuous, a little bit runny. Now we're going to add the juice of one lemon and all that lemon zest and give that a good stir. As you do this, instead of putting in the cheese, you do the citrus flavours and the olive oil to keep the clean flavours of your seafood. And we're just going to add another one dessert spoon, one sorry, one tablespoon of olive oil into the risotto. And we're ready to serve. So we're going to put this onto the dish and then we're going to add our salmon and sea bass onto it. So here we have our finished risotto with seafood. You can see that I've placed the piece of sea bass and the piece of salmon on the top and then it's got the shrimp and the clams scattered amongst the risotto. It's a delicious, delicious dish. I do hope you give it a try.